Hi everyone! I'm so happy to be back in my garden. This is one of my favorite places to be in the whole world, and my second favorite place is the school garden. I can't wait to go check out what has been growing since I have been gone for over a week now. So I got my hat, I got my bag, I got my apron. I'm ready to go. I'll see you in a little bit. Oh wow, I miss this place. I know it's only been a little bit of a week, but I really miss this garden. This is our welcoming arbor that was built out of an IBC container, and we planted it with sunflowers because one of our volunteers really loves sunflowers. Also, it has a passion for vine climbing up the arbor, and next to it is a, a container with some artichoke and a very sad rosemary bush. We have to do something about that. And on this side, we have some onions that were planted um, in the fall. And also you will see some pumpkin plants and squash plants in the back that we're hoping to train up the trellis right there in the back. And um, we're planning to have a fall festival. So you're gonna be seeing lots of uh, pumpkin plants throughout the garden. Okay, here's another container that's in much need of attention. Oh yes, and the citrus plant here uh, that really needs to be repotted. Okay, so here we have our blueberry bushes which are very much loved by the kids. It gave us lots of blueberries and we have a class of kinders who have been taking care of the um, of watering the plants and this pot was donated to us and painted and repurposed by a Girl Scout troop. Oh my, what do we have here? These are our rain gutter grow system that were made out of five gallon buckets that used to store donut filling. So we repurposed these buckets and we grew garlic and onion, peppers, tomatoes, arugula. And here we have an area that we protect our seedlings and our microgreens. Uh, it is very, very well used. However, it is in need of TLC. Uh, we've got our work cut out for us. And this is our very sad putting table our compost pile that has buckwheat growing out of it. It's kind of pretty, uh, but needs some care as well. Now we've gone to the part of my uh, favorite part of the garden. These are eight wicking beds, also called sub-irrigated um, planters. So they get watered from the bottom and we built these um, protection around them because we have rodents that try to eat everything we grow. <laughs> so in these beds, we have six pumpkin plants and uh, some kale that has wintered over. And here is another bed that has six tomato plants. And this bed is uh, you see the wire mesh all around it and that is to protect it from rodents and here we ran out of funds to make protection for this bed so it's still in the open so we've been trying different plants so that the rodents don't eat and Swiss chard seems to be doing very well and you see again there's some more pumpkin plants and squash plants we are getting ready for the fall. I hope we'll get lots and lots of pumpkins and squashes. And uh, there's a, a bean plant that's growing up. Here's another one, that another bed that's also very protected by this mesh. And we have tomato plants in there that are growing very well. And then um, the next bed has a zucchini plant. I didn't want to plant too many summer squashes uh, because you have to really be on top of them, harvest them. Otherwise, 
they will get really really big and uh, they won't taste as good like this one right here i was gone for a week and uh, we didn't get to harvest it so it's very very big right now and then um, another small pumpkin plant right there so I think we have four pumpkin plants in this four by eight uh, garden bed and there's another zucchini plant another pumpkin plant okay so this is a plant oh my goodness it's gone so big um, this is a bok choy plant that has gone to seed we are waiting for the seeds to be ready and it seems like they are ready uh, so tomorrow is garden club day i'm going to have the uh, kids come and harvest some of these seeds so we can save them for next school year okay this is we have some leeks left over from the fall and then um, this is our acorn squash that seems to have a few fruits here oh that one didn't make it probably didn't get pollinated and oh there's a large one there so i think tomorrow if i have a chance i'm gonna take teach the kids how to pollinate the plants and uh looks like uh oh i didn't i didn't mark this one i think it looks like it's, there's spaghetti squashes right here two large ones We've never really grown spaghetti squashes in this uh, garden bed or in, even at the school. So I don't know how long uh, spaghetti squashes can keep, but here's an acorn squash and a butternut squash. So I hope they will last until the fall for the fall festival. That would be kind of neat. And let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, any more squashes in there? Oh, there's a baby acorn, I mean, butternut squash. Okay, on to this bed here. This is our uh, <laughs> asparagus bed. I almost said spaghetti. And there's a dill plant that managed to get in there, a volunteer, and it's just taking over. And it's we're letting it go to seeds and uh, oh, we still have asparagus. This is a purple passion asparagus. Really, really sweet. I love, love, love it. And um, we are going to have a lot of dill seeds. So here's another look at our asparagus bed. So asparagus, if you don't harvest it, it will grow tall and then becomes fern-like and collects sunlight and stores it up for next year. Okay, this is our very first bed that we made, our first wicking bed. And uh, this eggplant, uh, I guess tree, it is taller than me. And it has been making so many delicious eggplants for us. And uh, in this bed also, as you can see, it's not protected. Um, so we try to grow things that rodents won't eat. Oh, I found a pill bug there. Um, so lemongrass and uh, eggplants. This is our fortress. <laughs> Not fortress of solitude, that's what I want to say, but our uh, fortress that we are trying to keep out rodents. But at the same time, we want to get as much sun as possible. So we built this fortress last year and it seems to be doing a pretty decent job at keeping the rodents out. We have four rows um, that are plants that we're trellising up. So cucumbers in the first row there. And here we have watermelon and some asparagus beans. And here is a row of tomatoes that's gone really, really, really tall and seem to be producing many, many, many tomatoes. And uh, Kids love to pick tomatoes. Uh, some of them love eating it, but all of the kids love harvesting tomatoes. So we're gonna have plenty for them to harvest. And here are the larger variety of tomatoes. And they seem to be producing 
almost or just as well as the cherry tomatoes on the other row. Oh, and here is our uh, what is it? Dill Atlantic Giant Pumpkin Plant on a Hugo Coulter bed made out of our two year old twigs and sticks compost and then um, planted a seed there. And way over here at a different part of the school garden is the fifth grade garden. We are planting some bottle gourds here. The fifth grade teachers have been gracious enough to let us plant some gourds up their chain link fences. And I think these will provide excellent support for these bottle gourds. They are a lot of fun. This is the first time that we're planting gourds at the school garden and uh, they're so much fun for kids to handle. The leaves are super soft. It's like touching um, a rabbit's ear and the fruits are so cute. We already have a, a couple of fruits. I hope they'll stick around. Um, they seem to be pollinated and uh, I have to make sure that I teach the kids how to hand pollinate these. I haven't been seeing many bees around the school garden. So if we want to make sure we have lots of fruits, we have to be vigilant about hand pollinating them. In the middle of this um, uh, area here, you see a ceramic looking um, uh, lid. And it is a lid to an oya. And that's how we water the plants. We water them at the base using these unglazed clay pots, also known as oyas, and they allow us to um, water only once a week. We fill it up, and uh, in a week we fill it up again. This is great for the summer when we won't have as many people around to help with watering. And uh, we're talking about how we can have these vines climb up the little arbor and then all the way to the other side of the chain link fence. I'm really excited to see how these plants turn out. We'll bring you more updates as the summer progresses. And I also have a video from the very beginning how a group of very brave kids and hardworking kids came out here to help me dig these uh, holes in the decomposed granite. We dug two holes and planted gourds in two identical areas, except for we didn't put the green protection ring around one area and something came and ate it, and so we had to replant it. So let's hope it'll make it this time. Overall, I'm super pleased with how the garden is doing. Yes, there was a leak and uh, there's a little flood right there, but I was told that uh, it is fixed. And yes, it's not the tidiest garden in the world, but it is the garden is very loved and very well used. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I can't wait for tomorrow for Garden Club when I can show the kids how to harvest the bok choy seeds. We'll harvest some squash, some eggplants, there's some cucumbers to be harvested, and uh, some tomatoes. Perhaps we can put it into the um, cafeteria for our Garden to Cafe program so other kids can enjoy them. All right, this is all I have for now. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour. I really had a lot of fun showing you our school garden and I just can't wait to see how things will progress this summer. I'll be making some more videos uh, updating you on how our squash, pumpkins, melons, and many other plants are, will be growing. I hope you'll stop by and check out our school garden again. Thanks.